What is up guys? We're back with another video and AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors are here. And that means we have a bunch of new motherboards. Now these new motherboards have some nice upgrades over the previous generation. So on X570, X570S, you know, we didn't have DDR5 support. We didn't have PCI Express 5.0 and we're getting that with these new boards. We're also getting the brand new AM5 socket. And the first board that we're taking a look at today is this guy which is ASRock's X670e Tai Chi. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, before we get into the board itself, beyond its normal accessories that you get, you know, SATA cables and everything like that, you actually get their Gen 5, or they're calling it their Blazing Gen 5 M.2 heatsink. It's a massive, actively cooled heatsink that has a fan on it. You know those Gen 5 NVMe SSDs are gonna run pretty hot, especially the first generation of those drives. So ASRock is ready. They have this active cooled heatsink uh, that you can use. Of of course, it's not pre-installed because it would be pretty big and if you're not using a Gen 5 drive, it would look kind of funny on the board. Uh, but it's nice that ASRock has included it. Now, as we take a first look at the board itself, for those wondering, this is an extended ATX board. So definitely make sure it's gonna fit inside your case. And then as far as the color design, ASRock has changed things up a bit from the previous generation, the X570 Tai Chi. Um, it's a little bit more toned down, but basically we have an all black board that has some gold accents. Like I said, toned down, but I do like the design. It looks pretty sleek. Starting at the CPU socket, we have AMD's new AM5 socket. You will notice the same AMD retention brackets on the top and bottom of the CPU socket, so older AM4 CPU coolers will work on these new motherboards. The big change, of course, is that AMD went from a PGA socket to an LGA socket, so the pins are actually on the socket itself. I honestly like this as I've accidentally bent pins on Ryzen processors before. Surrounding the CPU socket are, of course, our power delivery components, and ASRock is going with a 24 plus 2 plus 1 power phase design. Each V-Core phase is 105 amps, so that means you're going to get 2,520 amps for the CPU. So running AMD Ryzen 9 processors and overclocking them won't be an issue at all on this board. Covering those power delivery components are two large heat sinks which are connected by a heat pipe and that heat pipe actually goes through the entire board. ASRock has attached one of the heat sinks to the rear I.O. cover, and I really think it brings the top half of the board together. There's an active cooling fan embedded in the larger heat sink, and the I.O. cover does have a pretty nice gold accent on it, but there is no moving gear like we saw on the Z690 Tai Chi. At the top corner of the board, you'll find two 8-pin EPS connectors, and as we move across the top edge of the board, you'll find three 4-pin fan headers. One of these is for your CPU fan, but they're not color-coded, so it's just a little bit harder to find which one is for your CPU fan. On the right side of the board, you'll find your four DDR5 DIMM slots. These are metal reinforced and will support up to 128 gigabytes of DDR5 6600 memory. Right next to the memory slots is a heatsink, and it's actually for an M.2 slot. This slot can fit drives up to 110 millimeters and supports PCI Express Gen 4x4 and SATA 6 gig modes and is powered by the chipset. With the heatsink removed, we can see that ASRock does have pre-applied thermal tape on the back of the heatsink. As we come to the edge of the board, you'll find two 3-pin addressable RGB headers, your 24-pin ATX power connection, a 4-pin fan header, USB 3.2 Gen 2 header, USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 header, and a surprising eight SATA 6 gig ports. Four of these are powered by the chipset, and then the other four are powered by the AS Media ASM 1061 controller. At the bottom of the board, you'll find the rest of your headers and connections. So from left to right, you have your HD audio header, a four pin fan header, four pin standard RGB header, three pin addressable RGB header, two USB 2.0 headers, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 header, clear CMOS jumper, postcode display, two more four pin fan headers, a reset button, power button, and then your front panel headers. Like most boards these days, the bottom half of the board is characterized by heat sinks. 
There are two M.2 heat sinks, and then you have your chipset heat sink, which sort of goes into the other smaller heat sink. The chipset heat sink has a Tai Chi logo on it and some gears, but again, sadly, these gears do not move. Removing the two M.2 heat sinks, we find three M.2 slots, which all support 80 millimeter M.2 SSDs. The top slot is a PCI Express Gen 5x4 slot and is powered by your CPU, while the other two slots are PCI Express Gen 4x4 and are powered by the chipset. Just like the other M.2 heat sinks, these do have pre-applied thermal tape. As far as expansion slots go, you have two PCI Express 5.0 X16 slots, which are metal reinforced. Now the top slot will operate at X16 speeds if you have a single card installed, but if you have two cards installed, they'll both run at X8 speeds. As we move on to the rear IO, we have an integrated IO shield, which is basically all but common these days. From left to right, we have our clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback button, Wi-Fi antennas, HDMI, 2.5 gig ethernet, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A ports, audio connections, two Thunderbolt 4 type C ports, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A ports, and two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Both the ethernet and Wi-Fi are powered by Killer, so they do support their Double Shot Pro technology, which allows you to use both interfaces at the same time. The back of the board does have a large aluminum plate, which not only helps with cooling, but adds to stability as well. When it comes to RGB lighting, you of course have the Tai Chi logo on the chipset heatsink, and then along the front edge of the board, towards the bottom, you have a small section. Now on previous versions or previous ASRock Tai Chi boards, we saw the RGB go all the way up the front edge of the board. Here, it's only in the bottom corner. It's still gonna provide some nice glow, but I would say compared to previous generations, it is a little bit lacking. And of course, that Tai Chi logo on the chipset heatsink is likely to be covered up by your graphics card. So as we come to the end here, it's been a lot of fun taking a look at this board and seeing kind of, you know, all the new tech on it. Like I said in the beginning, we do get DDR5 support as well as PCI Express 5.0. And, you know, when we first started reviewing Ryzen processors, first gen Ryzen, we had a lot of issues with memory. And at least in our testing on this board, there's been no issues with DDR5 memory with AMD Expo. And you can even run, you know, XMP profiles on these motherboards as well. So no real issues with memory, which is definitely good to see. You know, when you are an early adopter, uh, sometimes you have to deal with those. And we definitely dealt with those with the first generation uh, Ryzen processors and motherboards. No issues, at least in my testing with any of that. Now this board specifically, of course, ASRock's X670E Tai Chi, it does sit as their flagship and it has pretty much everything that you would want in a flagship X670E motherboard. Like I said, you do get DDR5 support, you do get PCI Express 5.0. So both of your expansion slots are PCI Express 5.0. And then you have that top M.2, which is PCI Express 5.0 as well. And ASRock does give you that pretty insane heatsink with the active cooling fan for when you, you know, do go ahead and pick up a Gen 5 NVMe SSD. As far as extra storage beyond that, you have three more M.2 slots. They are PCI Express 4.0, and then the one up here can be used as a SATA one. And then you have eight SATA ports, which is kind of interesting to see on a board like this. You know, we're moving to more NVMe storage, but you do get eight SATA ports. Of course, four are controlled by the chipset, and then four have another controller. Um, so if you did want to do some crazy, you know, insane storage array, you can actually do it with this board. Uh, which is pretty nice to see. As far as VRM and VRM cooling, I mean, this board can support anything. I mean, you have over 2,500 amps available for the CPU. So if you are gonna be overclocking a Ryzen 9 processor, you're not gonna have any issues with power delivery. And in our testing, our VRMs stayed very cool and the active fan is not loud. Like it doesn't sound like a rocket ship taking off. And of course you can change the, uh, curves on that fan in the BIOS if you wanted to, um, but I really didn't notice that at all. And if you're doing gaming or anything like that, you're really not gonna notice it either. Um, you know, the only thing that I felt was kind of missing on this board was 10 gig LAN, 
You do get 2.5 gig LAN and then you get Wi-Fi 6E and they're both killer adapters, which means that you can use them in conjunction. Uh, I believe it's called their Double Shot Pro or, yeah, I think it's called Double Shot Pro. Uh, that's the killer tech that allows you to use both of those uh, connections in conjunction. So, you know, if you're plugged in, you can have all your games go through ethernet and then everything else can go through the Wi-Fi. Um, but it would have been nice to see something just a little bit better than 10 or than 2.5 gig LAN. Like I said, 10 gig LAN would be a nice thing to see there. Uh, I did mention it in our BIOS video, the BIOS, uh, there's no easy mode, which I was a bit bummed out on. And then in our review, we did mention that the companion software is a bit dated for this board as well. Um, for RGB fans, it is cut down a little bit, as I mentioned. Um, that's okay for some people. Of course, you can add RGB lighting. There's plenty of headers on this board, um, but it is definitely toned down from previous generations. Overall, I like the design of the board and all the features that you're gonna get. Now, this board sits at $499, which is the same price as, I believe, the Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master. Um, so you can kind of compare those two boards. It definitely sits below uh, ASRock's ROG line, or their ROG Crosshair line, um, by a couple hundred bucks. So. I think it's a good board. I think you're getting a lot of value. I didn't mention uh, Thunderbolt 4. You're also getting that as well. And you're getting the USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 by header. So you connect that to your case and you'll be good to go there. Now go ahead and check out our full written review on thinkcomputers.org. We have all of our benchmarks, everything like that, uh, that you guys definitely like to see. And we will have a link in the description where you can go ahead and pick this board up. Now, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.